got several things to go over today. I talked about doing, uh, <coughs> showing you some tools. I want to go over some uh, guys that some more of their collection in. I want to go over that. Jason Caldwell, he's got some really cool stuff. I understand he used to have a dealership. And we looked at some of his pictures last week. Now he sent some more in some of the paper that he had, and it's pretty cool. Get down to it here. Alpina or Alpina, it just depends on how you pronounce it. Um, I did try selling these back in the 80s. The issue here was uh, guys like the wrap handlebar really well. They just love that wrap handlebar, large spikes. And these dealers, uh, or these, excuse me, these uh, saw manufacturers never could really produce a really nice set of falling spikes or the sights. We call it the sights on the chainsaw and the clutch cover. They never could produce one that was quite right, and there was a few issues. I'm not saying this wasn't a great Italian saw. There was one, it was a huge, and I did sell some of those. They were, I believe, over seven cube. They were huge, uh, but they just didn't, never would catch on. But anyway, he's got some great stuff, really highly collectible stuff. A lot of the paperwork. Got the Olympic, Olimax, we call them Olimax Olympics. I sold some of those. Uh, they never really got into the pro market, but they were very popular for firewood cutting saw. They made a real reliable firewood cutting chainsaw. <clears throat> Scrunk, I see there's a caster, they got the caster uh, and uh, Tanaka. They, uh, we, we tried those, you know. Uh, we weren't afraid to try anything, you know. The guys were always wanting something new, but uh, anyway, uh, Tanaka. And he's got some really cool tool kits that came with the saws. You can see those. Those are awesome. Thank you for sending that in. I appreciate that. This is Michael's Blackledge. Black he's got some very awesome chainsaws. Don't, that looks, look at that. It looks brand new. Brand new. P60. Sold hundreds of those. I did on the West Coast. It had all the features the guys wanted. The wrap handlebar. We could make falling spikes for it. We got the really cool Pioneer sign. Rubber mounted, uh, vibration isolated. Uh, air cleaner was mediocre. We'd change those out. Uh, change them to the V stacks. Put V stacks on these. Got an extra hole in here. Put a little pipe in here. Doing it way ahead of our times. We were building high performance saws, and we were we were doing it back in the uh, early 80s. Isn't that a cool saw? Look at that 655 BP. BP had the custom, most of them had custom reeds. You see it's got the V stack. Not all of them came with that exact V stack. I We would turn those V stacks out on a metal lathe, aluminum, and put those stacks on them. Uh, the Pioneer Northwest, which was Claire Johnson out here on the West Coast, uh, See that, Brian? Good job. Uh, they would, uh, we would, they would put a different kind of a air filter on there. We always like the V stack, and then we would put what we call the green weenie. I don't know if you've seen those uh, foam filters are green. We call them the green weenies out here. I built thousands of those. I had the tools for making those air filters back back in the day. And uh, basically, they would mount on here. You'd oil them up. And what the guys liked about them is uh, they start filling up with dirt, and you just flick them. And all the chip shavings and stuff would fall off. Easy to clean, a lot easier than the cane in ones. And of course, the cane ins with vibration would break loose right around the top here. And so the green weenie was uh, the very most popular air cleaner out here on the west coast when you were running a V stack. And those were also used on motorcycles. You can see them. They used a clamp. They were green, and they used a clamp on it, like similar to that. And very popular. Very inexpensive. Isn't that a cool saw? Beautiful, beautiful saws. Got some McCulloughs there, got the Sears. Just beautiful stuff. Thanks for sending those in. And, and you know, I like to share all these. You can, you know, if you guys got some saws you want to show it. I don't care what it is. I mean, uh, we all love chainsaws. And uh, just a minute here. <laughs> Uh, do I look that young? I don't think so. Anyway, <laughs> look at this saw. Isn't this cool? 
That one's brand new. It's never had any gas in it, from what I understand, as the built-in sharpener, that chain. <coughs> that chain, they tried it out here on the West Coast. The timber cutters would not use it. A lot of your firewood cutters would use it. It just had a little lever. This one, I don't know if this one has that exact lever, but it's a little spring-loaded stone in there. And you rev the chainsaw up, and then you would push that while it was turning, and it takes the edge off the top of the tooth. It would take the edge off. And uh, it worked. I mean, um, Oregon's got something similar to that today. You've seen it advertised where they advertise the automatic sharpener you put on into your bar. Same, kind of the same principle. But anyway, roller nose, Oregon roller nose. That's a beauty. Just a beautiful chainsaw. Thanks for sending that in. Appreciate it. And I got a, uh, Quentin uh, added to his collection. He got a beautiful collection. All of his power saws. Let's get down here a little bit. We looked at these last week, but I just want to show you here. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> that is a beautiful, beautiful. Isn't that nice? Expansion chamber on that uh, 460. <clears throat> Got the max flow, of course. I thought it was max back there. Look at that. Beautiful job. And let's see if this will work well. <coughs> Thank you for saying that in. <clears throat> a couple of uh, mechanical questions here. I did get some questions about working on saws. And, and uh, let's see if I can get this one coming up. Everly's uh, Timber and uh, Saw Shop. Um, he's uh, working on a uh, steel chain saw. He's uh, wanting to put the seals. How do you pull the seals and how do you install the bearings? <clears throat> Just a minute here, let me just grab a tool here, hang on. This tool works, you can't use this on all chainsaws, but it works on most chainsaws. It's actually a Husqvarna tool. Years ago they made this tool for us and it was huge. Well, as things evolved, this is what it ended up being. And it's got the jaw here and you just have the piston off and uh, kind of exposed as we see it there together of course and you hook that in there screws out of the crankcase and you just crank up the reason you don't have to heat these up when you're taking the splitting the cases this aligns perfectly with the crankshaft and so you're not uh, if you were pounding out with a hammer which you never want to do that or you're trying to it apart you're actually bending everything and taking metal off of the crankcase, actually taking metal off there and you're shaving a little bit, minute. And you can do it, but it's just not the right way to do it. Anyways, uh, to get the seal out, there's a, there is steel, it makes an actual seal puller. It's got jaws on it, it looks like a puller with little uh, lips on it. And you can just crank it in uh, over the crankshaft there and it spreads out, locks, and you can pull out the seal. You can, if you're very, very, very careful, you can use those seal pullers you've seen in the stores. It's got the, it looks like a screwdriver with a hook on it. What you got to be careful of is not touching the, uh, the just a minute here, just soak in car diaphragm and brake fluid to really soften it. It will for a while. I've tried it. Softens those little diaphragms up beautifully. As soon as the uh, oxidation or air hits those, they stiffen right back up. I never had any luck. Maybe some of the other guys have some other ideas on that. He's wanting to soften up the hard, stiff diaphragms. Uh, there are some guys that build the diaphragms on the older saws. I've seen that. I've built them myself. I was able to get the material 
from one of the carburetor manufacturers. They were really nice, sent me a big sheet, and then you just use your little cut it, uh, crafting tools, cut it out. Actually worked, worked beautiful, but uh, takes time. But there's guys out there that actually do that. Anyway, back to this here, you, like I said, you've got to pull that seal out, and there is a special tool, a sleeve for driving the seal back in. It gives it the correct depth. It's got to be done right. <clears throat> you know, not saying you can't do it, but, uh, you know, yeah, the correct tools makes all the difference in the world. Then when you're done, of course, I've always talked that you should have a pressure vacuum tool to check your work, make sure you've done it right, see if you spray some soap around the seal after you've done it, after you've got the saw back together, the cylinder on, blocked off. Look for any air leaks. Chainsaws, two cycles, cannot have an air leak. It will ruin the chainsaw. Splitting that case, you do want to use a tool like this if you can. I definitely don't recommend mallets or anything like that. If you don't have a tool like that, you can use a heat gun. Looks like a, your wife's hair dryer on steroids. It's got a little window here that opens and closes, so you can really create the heat up. I use a heat, one of those heat sensor guns as I do it to get the correct temperature. And you can heat the cases. And then if you were to gently, and I mean gently, bump the crank with a rubber mallet, I guess I would say, be gentle and try it, and, and if it separates, great. And then, of course, the bearings usually stay on the crankshaft, and you, you would use a puller to pull those bearings off. And then you gently want to put those bearings back in the crankcase, and you're going to heat the crankcase one side at a time, throw the bearing in the freezer. It'll just fall right in. You hit the right temperature, falls right in. We've talked about that on previous videos if you want to research that a little bit. I do use a little bit of <coughs> sealer on the gasket, and for years it was not recommended, but um, because of uh, just circumstances, the saw is being on and off, and, and uh, let's back up a little bit. When you're taking that gasket off the crankcase, you want to be gentle. You don't want to take a razor knife and just start trying to take that off and gouge. You can, these are so accurate on these crankcases, you can gouge a little into the crankcase there and damage where it won't seal properly then of course you need all the sealer you can get to try to seal what happened but anyway you put a little bit of a, just a dot on your fingers and rub it together and then you go over the gasket like that put that on there seal it back up don't use globs I've seen guys use globs that stuff we don't want to do that anyway that's just kind of a highlights from what you do on there I want to show you a couple tools before we go any further. We talked about tools. Tachometers. Guys are always asking me about tachometers. <clears throat> Truthfully, one does not do it all. You know, some of them are, will work on a lot of the tools, but not are on the chainsaws, but not all. I've had this one for years. It works on all your old saws. It's made by steel. Well, they don't make it, but anyway, they sell it. Don't think it's available anymore. It was real accurate. You just held it up towards the spark plug wire. It worked beautiful. They came out with a couple of versions since then, and uh, you will use them on different models. Uh, with the new electronics and everything, it's hard to have a tachometer that does it all. And what these wires are for, you can actually wrap it around, coil it around the spark plug wire, or you just hold it close to the plug wire. If this was a plug wire, you just spark plug, you just lay it on it or get close to it, and you'll give a real accurate reading. But as far as having one that does it all, <coughs> it's pretty tough. As far as checking the fire on a chainsaw or anything, of course, uh, I've got to throw that disclaimer out there. This is this is, these videos are for entertainment only. Don't try this stuff at home because I'm afraid you might set the house on fire. This is probably my go-to one right here. I modified it. You can pick these up. Uh, most shops will sell it to you. I modified mine with a ground wire. The reason I did that is it's hard with this clip to get a good ground on that cylinder. A lot of them are zinc coated and so you don't get a good ground. So you put this in the plug cap of course. 
and then you can scratch somewhere on the saw and get a really good ground and of course you want to see a good blue fire do this away from the spark plug hole I've had flames come out there that far on a chainsaw when you spin that over and it, you didn't know that it was flooded and that thing will light up like you wouldn't believe what tack would be the best for the old saws like a steel 38 you know I've used this one uh, you get them from steel that's a good one uh, Echo makes a similar one like this, and I've had really good luck with it. It looks almost identical to this. You need to talk to one of your dealers. A lot of them don't want to sell that stuff for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, we've always sold it. Or I've always sold it. Uh, I tried to help the guys out. But uh, really accurate uh, for checking things. You betcha, uh, Dan. Take care. That's my go-to one. Works beautiful. This is a good one for testing the saws while they're running. And the way it works, this is a heavy duty one. You know, they make a light duty one. I've seen it around and it don't last very long. You can get them, the light duties you can get at the hardware stores, they're, they're really no good. This one here, uh, you can uh, put it in line from the spark plug cap to the spark plug. It has a blackout rotator here where you can actually rotate it so it's easier to see. And then you can actually watch the fire as it's running. And you can even be cutting a piece of wood, and when the customer says, well, it cuts out when it's cutting wood after three cuts or something like that, you can actually take it out there with customers standing far away watching you. And if it starts missing or something, you can tell if it's actually missing ignition, if the ignition is misfiring, or if you've got carburation problems, sometimes those will almost duplicate each other. And so you want to uh, kind of eliminate one or the other. And of course, <clears throat> you will know, and as we talked about before, the spark plug wire, if this was coming off the coil, these have a, these do separate by the cap. You gotta check there where it plugs into the coil, check your ground wires. There's several things you can check there. Let's see here. Husqvarna, for years, rubber mounts, uh, 060s, excuse me, two, two, 266, 61s, 372s, 181s, 288s, 2100s. Those motor mounts, I've had guys call and say, how in the world do you get those motor mounts out? That's the magic tool. And you can build these. They are hardened because after using them three or four times, if they're not hardened, these will get soft and turn on you. And what you got to do on that motor mount, it's sitting in a little cavity. Rubber mount stick in there, or it's busted off. See them busted off, and there's all kinds of debris around it. You've got to get in there with a real fine screwdriver, an ice pick type of tool. Clean really well so you can see those two notches. There's always be two notches on a motor mount on a Husqvarna on the older saws. Once you can see those two notches, if you have your tool, you just reach in there, lock, it locks into place, and you just twist it right out. I found that I could also do it with a nice long set of needle nose pliers. Snap on makes a really nice set here. Let me see if I got one here. I'll show you. And it's in my other toolbox. Anyway, so it's just your real nice set of needle nose, and they've got the, the uh, stick out about that far. And you can actually reach in there gently and pop it loose. The old saws, we're talking the old saws now from the 70s, 80s and stuff. Uh, home light 750s, 650s, there were several of them. The linkage, they, the linkage would tweak a little bit of bend when the guys pull on the saws. And you try to take a pair of pliers and straighten them. I found take a bar wrench, regular bar wrench, put you a nice notch in it there. Get you two of these and you can actually Hold that wire, throttle wire, and with the other one you can, because they're hardened, they're, they're not really soft, they're semi-hardened. And you can tweak those a little bit and just line that linkage up beautiful. Of course, these gauges, you know, <clears throat> I'm not a real proponent of uh, the checking the compression on your saws. I mean, you can do it. I've had guys have from... 80 pounds of pressure to 300 pounds of PSI. I mean, I've heard everything in the world. Average, if you really want to, you know, if you're into the compression testing, the average, according to the manufacturers that I went to, 
100 to 135 is pretty norm, uh, depending hot, cold, how many cranks you pull up, throttle closed, throttle open, so many variables. What I usually do is to take the exhaust off, look in there, look for damage, check the ring clearance, make sure it looks good. You can actually push on the ring a little bit and tell, if you've got a good feel for it, you can tell how far in that ring goes into the ring gland, telling you you've got enough ring tolerances to run, saw run good. Very rarely would I, in the last in, in years, up to now, I would do a compression jack. I, you know, you can if you want. It tells a little bit. The manufacturers will want a lot of the newer technicians to do that just to verify that they're doing some testing to know what they're they're talking about. I am also a. T there you go, Dan. <clears throat> Sounds like an old McCullough 101. Anyway, that's, you know, you can run the gauges, do what, do that if you want. I do believe, though, I really do do use and do every day when I'm not doing it anymore, pressure vacuum. Pressure vacuum. You've got to have a sealed crankcase, cylinder, hoses. It's got to be perfect. Vents got to work perfectly on a chainsaw. There's several things that have to work. And... Uh, you get those things working, and of course the saw is going to run beautiful. Oh yeah, I want to go over one more thing. I had a gentleman, uh, let me see here, <clears throat> ask a question about, uh, he's wanting to build a 101B McCullough chainsaw, and he wanted to know if he could do that in a smaller frame saw. You really can't do it. Uh, McCullough never built 101B chainsaws from the factory. That motor was available. It was a, a spin off of the uh, 125 and they built it for go karts. <clears throat> Bob McCullough was really into racing and he developed several kart engines, and that 101B was the, it was the engine. There was a couple modifications that had to be done. One was the oiler passage in the, excuse me, in the uh, crankcase. You had to drill that, had to put the little seal in there, had to either welded, usually welded, or we on the cylinder. Thin, we'd weld for a bracket to mo mount the motor mounts, or we would do the tin work, drill holes in that, put a couple washers on that. And very easy to do, but as far as putting in a uh, <clears throat> smaller frame of color, it's not, not possible. We did put some in some gear drives, and man, oh man, uh, that was pretty impressive. You could, whatever length of bar you wanted, you could run it. A few more questions, and then we'll wind her up here, guys. There's a nice uh, 170 there. He's got a stuck oiler. Stuck by meaning he can't push the button. Only way you're going to get into there to do anything, you're going to have to get that fuel tank off. You're going to have to take that off. It's a little bit of a challenge. You can take the bolts out the, from the trigger uh, grip from the tank. You've got to pull all this off. A lot of times you've got to split the tank. It's quite a chore. There's no easy way to do it. McCullough back then they were labor intense to work on these saws and it's not a great thing to fix real quickly but it, it is doable if you got the time and you know if you uh, take everything apart there you should be able to fix that oiler. Yeah we've got a couple more here we'll see. Oh, this is John Clark's great guy. He's restoring his uh, 026. And there's the bar that he restored on it. Looks really nice. And that's the saw he's working on. Isn't it beautiful? Very nice, John. Thanks for sending that in. Let's see here. See, we got one more here. This is Steve Amos, is, he's from, uh, I think it's Michigan, anyway, anyway, look at this beautiful saw, 650, got the big spikes on it, wrap handlebar, what's unique about this, is it's got a little gearbox on it, look how clean it is, look how clean that is, nice. I don't think that's the right spark plug, just observing it. Uh, most all the Macs have a uh, 
tapered uh, hole and a no washer on the spark plug. Uh, a lot of people didn't realize that, but uh, if you'll check into that, you'll notice that uh, it's tapered where that spark plug goes in. It'll run on that plug, but you know, if you get the correct one, that's great. Anyway, there's that gearbox right there. Muffler's still in good shape, it looks like. Yeah, there's the front side of that gearbox. Look how big that dog is. Thanks for sending that in. Okay, <clears throat> had some questions about saw chain, and I want to go over a couple things. Uh, a lot of guys run uh, Oregon chain, a lot of guys want the Carlton chain, and I was able to verify Carlton is owned by Oregon, which I knew that. So I called uh, Vic, he's kind of the guru on that, he worked for Oregon for years, and uh, what it is, is when uh, Oregon bought Carlton, they, they agreed to keep the side straps, the angles, as Carlton, Mr. Carlton, wanted, and to kind of separate it from Oregon that way, other than just saying, saying this is Oregon 72CJ, we're going to stamp Carlton on it, and it's going to be Carlton. Well, Anyway, they kept the angles as, as what Carlton liked and wanted. Uh, strapping was the same way Carlton had it. <clears throat> and that's how you differentiate between the Carlton and the Oregon saw chain. Yes, they are, or, they are owned by Oregon, but they did separate them to where they kept their characteristics. Great question. If you guys have any questions like that, you know, I'll try to help you. I can't say I can answer them all, but we'll see. And I think that's going to wind it up for the day, guys. Uh, if you got any questions out there, you know, fire them to me, uh, text. You can sometimes call it. Hard, hard to get through on the old cell phone at times, but, uh, you know, it's there. And you can message me. And uh, and your uh, saw collections, I wasn't able to get them all on today. Oh, I did have one more question here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want to get this. I told how to uh, repair the plastic stripped out holes on the fuel tanks. How you can take weed eater line, cut a couple chunks, slide it in there, run the screw in with some sealer. <clears throat> this is what this is. I've always known this about the uh, polypropylene, and they described it just how I've always described it. Uh, it's just uh, the quality of the polypropylene, such as the uh, it, its strength and resilience and nothing basically sticks to it it's just amazing as you know you fill it up with get you fill it up with your plastic tank with fuel fuel doesn't touch it you know you get gasoline on most plastic and it just melts it Pop it polypropylene is just resilient you can't really do anything to it but nothing really sticks to it and that's the issue that's why it's hard to weld I use a welder uh, I welded that stuff up forever it looks something like a wood burner and you weld it using stainless steel uh, mesh I don't know if there's some videos I've made of that you can look at but anyway what you can do is use the uh, weed eater line and a uh, the screw and put some of this Loctite here this actually does work pretty good on polypropylene and it's uh, it's the uh, ideal it's called ideal for all plastics and it works beautiful and that'll help seal that up Beautiful saws. Aren't those beautiful? Okay, I'm going to wind it down for the day. Uh, anybody that, uh, you know, has got a question on the uh, uh, chainsaws or anything like that, uh, feel free to get hold of me and we'll uh, shut her down for today. You guys have a great day out there. I get her shut down, guys.